Today we talk all about the Aquahot 450D, how it works, and diagnostics. This is where we enjoy the ride. So come on, let's go. So what are those things, the red things that uh, you just call put all on? kinds of stuff. He, in, in medical terms, they're called hemostats, but in mechanicing terms, they're just uh, essentially line clamps. They just clamp off the flow uh -huh. of, in this case, diesel fuel. You can do it for water too. Okay. Um, I've never even had them. I use. <laughs> I used to use things like vice grips and things like that. Yeah. These don't damage the line and they have a very, they're kind of, they come to a, a, a sort of a wedge point. So they really clamp it off well. Um, I found with vice grips, a lot of times it'll clamp it off except one little part on the side and it'll allow stuff to leak through. And doesn't vice clamps have... Um, they can damage the hoses. Because of the teeth, yeah, right? So. Okay. And it's hard to get the right, you know, you either over clamp or under clamp because you have to turn that little, the screw to tighten it down. These, you just go down and then they stop and they lock. Okay. And you just hit this little button and they pop open. So what is that red knob on the left side down at the bottom for? Um, okay, so that is, that's actually the drain. So Aquahot gives you this little valve. It's just a, a ball valve. And you can screw, and I have it. I have a setup now because I did. I had to change this fluid. This fluid is—it's kind of brownish looking in this tube. But if you look in the reservoir, it's, it's fairly red. Mm -hmm. So the the I, I by no means am I an expert on aquahots, but I have learned an awful lot in the last couple of weeks. I learned this early on when I looked at this stuff to begin with. When we first bought when it, when we you first mean? bought it. It worked, but this stuff was brown. And what I learned is that there's two different kinds. It doesn't there's there's effectively no difference between the two fluids. One just happens to be green, and one happens to be pink. But if you mix pink and green together, they become brown. So, and the problem with it, it being brown is you can't see you can't see through the liquid because the liquid should be clear. When it starts getting really cloudy, it means that it, there's breaking down or there's stuff in it and it, you have to change it. Because it, it, if the more stuff that's in it, and I don't know if it's algae or whatever it gets, whatever uh, accumulates in there, but whatever it is, it, it slows down the heat transfer effectiveness. So they say if it gets mur murky, cloudy, if somebody accidentally or on purposely, whatever, puts the wrong color fluid in, it turns this brown color. You can't see through it very well through this hose. Like you can see through this hose, it's fairly clear. So long as it stays clear like that and it stays at the right level, you're good to go. And heat transfer happens. You have to change this periodically so that they give you this hose, connects to the bottom of the tank, the boiler tank, uh, and you just hook up a, an extension hose to it. Uh, you put it into a, a container, drain it all out. It holds, our system holds like five gallons of that stuff. So your container has to be pretty big yeah, and the then you take it to, to a recycler big. center? Yeah, you, yeah, you definitely, it's, it's not, it's not regular antifreeze. It's not the same antifreeze. It's food grade, right? Food grade antifreeze. So for instance, this stuff, if it spills on the ground and the dog licks it, it it's not toxic like the stuff that's in the radiator. Um, and it's also so if you get a spill in your inside your motorhome or whatever, you're not you're not spilling toxic stuff in your in your motorhome. So that's what that's for. This drains the system out. So okay. also if you have to fix a leak or if you have to replace a pump, replacing a pump though you can just clamp off here and here. Uh huh. And then, but the, the issue you run into is that when when you replace the pump, sometimes. We have newer pumps, which is good. And there's dual pumps because both of those look the same. So there's actually, on this unit, there's actually four pumps. Okay. 
So these are just the system as you, as I've learned so far. This is the heart and soul of the unit. If this doesn't work, I won't say nothing works, but nothing from the diesel burner perspective works because there's still an electrical element which we've been using on this weekend for hot water. Mm -hmm. But it but it only heats up what's in the tank, and when that goes, it, it takes a long time to heat back up. So this, it's a regular RV uh, electric kinda. It's heater? a it's a low grade version because the heating element's not as it's not as powerful, or, or you know, it doesn't have as much uh, heating capability as what's in a regular uh, six or ten or twelve gallon mm -hmm. hot water heater, propane hot or electric hot water heater. So. This is like what we have in the house. This is the, uh, that one's propane. This one's diesel burner on demand. It heats up the boiler fluid that, that, that runs through the system for the hydronic heating in our coach, which has, we have little radiators at different places that are thermostatically controlled so that the, the hot antifreeze goes through those, the pan blows over it, the heat, the hot air comes out. It's really nice. It's not, it's not forced air. It doesn't. It's not. It doesn't dry out. It's pretty. It's a pretty good system. But at the same time, there's coils that wrap around this burner chamber that the fresh water runs through those coils. And and then they also, uh, I think, they go into the tank because there's a certain amount that's in the tank that that you can access when you turn on the hot water. Mm -hmm. um, but those coils go around the burning unit. So when you turn this thing on, you turn on a hot water faucet, it trips a, one of the circuits in here. It turns the burner on, the burner fires up and the burner runs and it, it heats those coils. So all the water that's going through those coils is superheated as it goes through. Because this thing cuts off at 215 degrees. That's its high limit. Its operating range is somewhere between 158 and 195. That's mm -hmm. what the book says. So when it gets down to 158, below 158, it, the, this thing, if it's not already on, kicks on and heats the, heats the fluid back up again. If it's already operating, which it was, as soon as you turn on a faucet, this thing turns on and stays on. Mm -hmm. So this is the heart and soul. It's a diesel burner. It's got a motor in it. It's got a fan in it. It's got a fuel pump in it, a fuel regulator, which is what I think is bad on ours. A fuel regulator, the co ignition coil, and a burning the, the the fuel nozzle that sprays out the fuel that, that that when the ignition coil ignites it turns the flame hits the flame goes into that burning chamber and that's like I said that's the magic that happens so that this is the heart and soul <clears throat> these are the diesel lines coming in from the tank mm -hmm. they go through a filter come in here go into the into the fuel pump the fuel pump runs at like a hundred and it's set it's actually set at 145 pounds psi so but it, it, it's like a diesel engine. So whatever's not used immediately flows right out the other side, back up and goes back into the system. So it's a, it's a contu continuous loop. So those are the diesel lines on this side. These are the pumps. These are the zone pumps, they call them. So this one, these, this one provides, well, I don't know which one it is, but one of these provides the hot, the, the boiler fluid to go to the zone, uh, radiator heating units in the rear part of the coach so the, the the bath the back bath the bedroom and that's the uh heating unit for to warm to heat, the coach to heat the coach up yeah, right to, it's not your, the water it's, but it's your heat okay it's your in interior heater right so the, mm -hmm. and there's and then there's one in this mid bath so that's one pump the other pump goes to under the kitchen counter behind the sofas and in the under right actually blows right on the passenger's feet. So that's what these two are. These two are controlled. They're turned on and off by the thermostats inside, which are, there's uh, sensors in the ceiling, in the roof, in the ceiling mm -hmm. uh, that regulate, that, that uh, measure the temperature and tell it when to come on and off. So you set it at 74 degrees, if it drops down to 72, it kicks on, this thing kicks on, this thing kicks on. Like a regular thermostat at a home. Right, so there was a click that just happened just now, and that was the electric element turning off. Um, it was heating the tank back up because it had dropped below its its cooler level. Mm -hmm. And so the, that had been on for a little while to heat it back up. It takes a lot longer for that to heat the, heat the, the boiler tank up. 
but you'll see up here that this is halfway up. The, the, the boiler fluid is halfway between cold and hot, which means that when I see this, that means this tank is hot. It, it, it's heated. When it's off completely, no electric, no diesel burn, no nothing, just completely off, this fluid will sit way down here at the cold level. And then when this is on and burning and running it up to temperature, this thing will actually move way up here because the boiler fluid gets really hot and then it kind of comes back down. So these are the zone pumps. This is what they call a stir pump. Uh, it's the same kind of pump, uh, the same unit, but what it does is it cycles the bo boiler fluid through the tank when, when it's heating. And um, this is on when, if these two, if these zone pumps are on, this doesn't have to be on. But if these are off, so say your heater's off, but you're, you're running hot water, this zone pump comes on, or this uh, stir pump comes on to, to ro move that fluid through the boiler to, to, to make sure that the boiler fluid's getting uniformly hot and not getting really super hot and it heated in one, in one part of it, but not the rest. So it just, it cycles the, the stuff through the boiler. Um, and and this will actually come on with the electric element because I heard it overnight. Because we only we didn't have the we don't have the diesel going because we have this issue with the fuel, so we've been running the electric. And I heard this pump. I could hear it come on in the bedroom. I could sit up in the bedroom and hear the pump. So it runs on me. either. And it, uh, so it'll run on either one as long as 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 long as this thing recognizes. Hey, I need to move that that uh -huh. fluid through the system uh, so that it doesn't superheat in one place or at one part or the other of the unit then that'll come on in conjunction with either this or this, electric okay. or, or diesel. So those are the two pumps there. And then there's another pump up there. Other than that, I mean, it, it's a, the way I described it earlier was this is a very, very sophisticated system because of what it measures, what it does, what it turns on and off. And so for instance, this is also connected to heater hoses from your engine. So there's, it works both ways. You can turn this on, let's say you're in really frigid cold conditions and diesels don't like to start up. Like our truck has a engine block heater. You plug it in overnight, it keeps your engine warm so that when you go to start it, it fires right up, right? Well, this has an engine heater, a preheat button. You hit the preheat button, this thing warms up or if it's already on, it just, it, it then pumps fluid through the engine and back into the system. So, so it's a built-in uh, engine it, heater it's block. A, it's a built-in. It's a built-in engine oh, preheat. Preheat. But, okay. But conversely, when you're running down the road, the engine gets hot, right? Mm -hmm. And that pro pro that provides heat to your to your um, uh, to the to the front of the coach in through the through your your. Uh, driver climate controls up front, right? You have okay. heater hoses that go up there and heat that, uh, heat the uh, heater core up. And then that, you know, that's where you get like a car, same thing. Uh -huh. Well, this also heats that tank. So the engine actually reverse heats the system that would normally, that this would heat the engine, it heats this. So when you're running down the road, you can actually run your aqua hot, your, your heating vents it's not, the diesel burner's not going because you're getting heat from the engine that heats this tank mm -hmm. and the engine runs at 100 and, you know, 195 degrees. So it's perfect for this temperature wise. So it, it heats this tank, the, the boiler tank up and the fluid up. So you're running down the road, you don't turn on the, the aqua hot, the diesel burner part, you just turn on the, the, the thermostats and then they go, well, it's cold in here. So boom, and it starts these pumps and it runs the, the antifreeze through the, the different registers and heats up your coach. So it's sophisticated in all the different things that it does, but simplistic but fairly, on mechanical. Yeah, it's fairly simple to work on and diagnose. The nice thing is you can test everything, right? You can you can pull the, the electrodes off these pumps. If the pump's not running, you pull the electrode off, you put 12 volt to it, it'll either run or it won't run. And if, if the motor runs, but it's not coming on, then it's one of the switches that, that activates and turns this on. It's either your thermostat or it's the, 
the the limit switches on the tank or you know so but in and the nice thing is there's there's a whole the, the manual that they provide from the factory is which factory from the aqua hot the, okay. the, the the manufacturer of this thing they did a pretty good job one of the things he said is that this thing these things need to be run regularly you're supposed to run according to the the service manual i watched a video um i daryl i can't remember his last name but daryl from my rv works in washington uh he's a he does a has a mobile repair business up there and he did a video on an annual service and a troubleshooting thing and it was extremely helpful really good and what he the things he said completely lined up with uh in fact he probably got his training from aqua because some of them came sound like they came directly out of the manual mm -hmm. so um it was very helpful well then in there he had a link to and it's actually to i don't know if it's to aqua but anyway you can download the service manual and it's not a owner's manual, it's the service manual. It tells you how to go through all the stuff, how to do all the testing of all the components. It tells you in each section how what the fuel, anoid, fuel solenoid, how it operates, what it does, how it affects the system, and then how to test it and how to replace it and, and so forth. Extremely helpful manual. Daryl's video, I think it's Daryl, his video is extremely helpful. And, and so anyway, early on, we ran it it ran it was it worked um it started faulting inside we turn it on it would run and then it would fault it would, the, the, the little button the burner would go off and the, it would say fault on the inside switch we have a different kind of switch panel it's a it's a multiplex system so it actually has the ability to put to show off on and fault in the same um, LCD screen is what it is. So it, it has these different uh, codes that show up. So it, it would say fault. Turn it off, wait a little while, about 30 seconds, turn it back on, fire it up, and it would run. And sometimes it would just run normally, and sometimes it would, in a while, fault again when it when it went off and came back on. So obviously that we had to, <laughs> there was something wrong, had to start figuring out what was wrong. So didn't know much about it, watched the guy, watched Daryl video, um, downloaded the manual read the manual started going through the different pieces of the system did the annual order the parts did the annual service replaced the fuel nozzle the fuel filter and did a spray pattern check before i replaced the fuel nozzle so you pull the unit out turn it around ground the electrodes so you make sure you don't have a spark so you don't get a flame as he said a flamethrower which would be bad um and to, did the fuel test and it was just squirting so if you if you have if you ever have a car or a diesel a truck or whatever and your your injector just squirts like a stream that's not going to ignite very well it has to be a spray pattern so obviously that was an issue so i replaced that did another uh, test and i had a spray pattern but i also had fuel kind of kind of spurting and, and leaking out before the spray pattern started so to me that indicated the problem i was having with the problem how it manifested itself outside was that when it fired up it goes through a pre-cycle the in, the motor comes on inside here it starts clearing the chamber out then when it's i think it's about 10 uh, 15 or 20 seconds it then kicks on the pump the fuel pump starts building pressure when the pressure hits the 145 mark it opens the fuel solenoid and allows fuel to flow through the nozzle and at the same time the ignition coil ignites the fuel mixture and boom you got as soon as you have flame then the um there's a flame sensor in there it's basically a photo cell the flame sensor says hey we have flame and it turns off the ignition coil so that's what I'm saying. It's a it's a very sophisticated system, but it actually is fairly simplistic to understand. And so, uh, so anyway, I I could tell I was I had fuel coming out before I had a spray pattern. So when it did ignite, it did ignite the the the, the spray pattern, but you had a lot of excess fuel in the in the burn chamber. So it would fire up and, and it would have to burn all that excess fuel out. So you had diesel smell coming out. You had actual diesel, uh, diesel um, 
not just fumes, but the but actual you know, raw diesel coming out of the exhaust pipe and onto the ground. So clearly that's not a good thing. So I started going through and I suspected maybe it was the fuel solenoid or it could be the flame. It, there was a couple things it could be. So I just went through them one by one. The flame sensor works. It, 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 it has the correct resistance when light is applied or, or light is taken away. So then I did a solenoid test and the solenoid clicks, but um, there's a plunger and a spring that is connected to the solenoid itself. And so there's, it shows signs of wear on the rubber that's supposed to seal off the, chain, the, the, um, the canal that the fuel flows through, the tube, or the, it's not a tube, it's one chamber comes out and one chamber goes in. And anyway, where the fuel flows through, there's a rubber um, surface that goes up against the, the inlet that holds it. Is that the plunger? Well, the plunt that's on the end of the plunger. Okay. Well, and the plunger is also controlled by a spring. So if the spring's weak, then the fuel pressure pushing on it is gonna kinda wanna move it away and create a gap. Also, if it's worn, then that's gonna create a gap where and fuel, I mean, anybody who's worked on a diesel, it finds a way to leak. <laughs> it finds a path to leak somehow or another because it's so, it's so, uh, um, it basically you have to have everything really tight to keep it, keep it, uh, keep it contained. So anyway, that's what appear, appears to be the problem. So I ordered a fuel solenoid. I ordered a bunch of parts from Aqua Hot, and we're waiting for it. We get it. We'll, I'll pull this out for about the fifth or sixth time. Pull it out and pull the, mo the, uh, the burner unit out, turn it around, pull all the parts off the end, replace the fuel solenoid, put it all back together. And I'll probably do a, a spray test before I put it back in just to see, do I still have a good spray pattern? And am I not getting fuel leaking past the, um, the fuel solenoid? So, because once it's up and running, I know my, my fuel pressure is good, my air fuel mixture is good, and the, uh, the spray pattern out of the nozzle is good because when it's running, it's perfect. It, it runs hot, there's no excess smoke, there's no excess diesel smell. It's on shut off and, and shut down and, and start up. Mm -hmm. And that's when the fuel solenoid is active. Because what? on shut down, the fuel solenoid closes. Uh -huh. And so here's the thing. So the fuel solenoid is open the entire time it's running. So it's always being pulled back. And um, and so, you know, it's a mechanical part. It's an electromechanical part. They, they just fail. So instead of the, the fuel solenoid does click like it's supposed to, but, and the parts that go in it, the plunger, the spring, and, and those, those parts are about 120 bucks and the unit's about 270. We call it a base, we, you and I have called it a baseline, establishing a baseline with our RV to know what it, what's been done, how it's been done, what parts are new, what parts are not. And to me, it was just a better idea to replace the entire solenoid that comes with the plunger and the spring and everything in it. And I'll keep the solenoid, the, the, the old one, yeah, I don't throw stuff away that, that appears to work. So I will keep that. As in, a backup. As a backup in case the solenoid does fail out mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the, uh, the world, I can at least pull it apart use the, the internal parts from the, the one that fails and the old one, and it'll probably work to get me to wherever I need to be. Okay, and what kind of mechanical level of experience do you think you should have to work on a unit like this? <sighs> oh man, that's a hard question to answer because it really depends on what you're, you know. Well, to own an, <laughs> I've heard this said over and over and over again. To own an RV or a trailer or a camper or a whatever, if you don't have some level of interest in and level of handy man, woman, person skills, mm -hmm. you're gonna spend a lot of money keeping it up and you're gonna be stuck without an RV for long periods of time because it's gonna go into the shops and the shops are all busier and all get out, they can't hire anybody. So you need to have that kind of skill level anyway. And if you don't have it, just start reading start what like you said watch videos because mm -hmm. a Which, lot of people have good information in their videos and we will link daryl's uh channel in the description down below and as I, well i do know his his business name and and i and his youtube name is my rv works 
and he's out of, um, I don't know what specific town, but he's out of the Northwest. He, he happened to be in Port Washington, which I thought was interesting because we went there. On our honeymoon. What was that, 99, right? Yes. 99. Good thing you remember your honeymoon. I'm, well, I'm old, so. Give me old. <laughs> But anyway, so how, how much experience do you have to have? So this, to do with the testing accurately, you kind of, you need to understand ohm, you know, using an ohm meter and resistance, um, using a volt meter, neither of which, neither of which are extremely complicated. Um, some of the, some of the testing equipment, if you, like specifically, one of the testing, uh, a, a piece of testing equipment is the fuel gauge that you use to, you, you take off the fuel nozzle, you screw the fuel gauge right into where the fuel nozzle came off, you turn the system on and it says, boom, I have X amount of pressure. And mm -hmm. it should be 145. That's, that's for what, this unit. For, for the aqua hot. And that seems to be, I can't say it for sure, but anyway, it seems to be all, this one's 145 pounds. Okay. And what is, this unit, what is it called? Ours, ours is an Aqua Hot. Ours is a 450D. Um, the manual I have is a specific service manual for the Aqua Hot 450D E3, and there's there's sub models. This one, no. This this manual is exactly for this unit, and they have one for each of the different levels. There's like a, a 100, 200, uh, 300, 400, 600 series models. So, um, so as far as level, skill level, I mean, I would say that you need to be fairly mechanically inclined, but none of it's rocket science. It's just, and the manual is awesome. I mean, it really tells you how to go through, it tells you how to take the burner, the burner unit off step by step. Um, you know, disconnect the fuel, clamp the lines, disconnect the fuel lines. There's two bolts that hold it on, make sure you're, your control unit's out of the way, and then you pull it out carefully and turn it around. And so, I mean, they go through it step by step. So it, I wouldn't be afraid to do it. I would just, you know, take your time and mm -hmm. understand that you can probably get parts in certain local places. We can't really around here. So I've just ordered them. And there's different places. There's Hydronic Heating Warehouse. They're on the East Coast. I found um, Heat My RV has parts and stuff uh parts and you know manuals and things like that um but i've 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 elected to buy my stuff directly from aqua hot and it, where they are they located they're in colorado frederick i think colorado and they they don't discount their parts obviously uh some of the hydronic heating they they do have a discount they do have somewhat of a discount but we're closer to colorado so the stuff gets here in a couple days versus a week or a week, a week and a half. So, and it looks like that you changed your compartment around a little bit. Talk a little bit about that panel over there and what you did. So anyway, so I started looking at this and I'm like, well, <laughs> this was down a little bit lower. It actually was here, but it had been here and somebody moved it from here to here, moved it up one. Well, I just moved it up to here a little bit higher. And I moved the, this is the control panel, uh, the control unit for this whole system, including pumps and the, the, the burner, everything runs through this board. And so I moved this up as well, so that I'm gonna cut this panel off right here. There's nothing on the backside. It's just a metal panel to sort of block the mechanical under there and have something to mount this to. So I'm gonna cut that off around this corner and, um, then I saw a trick back there by one of the the uh, mobile repair guys back there that was working on my neighbor's coach, and he used this. It's he's an automotive. It's a um, um, it's just a channel, and it's a protective thing. And, and you just slip it over the top of this, and it it goes up both sides. And it's made out of sort of a rubbery rubberized material. And you put it across there, and that way when you're reaching in and out. You're not scraping your arms back and forth with this metal, especially mm -hmm. since I'm going to cut this off. Then I'll, it'll, there won't be any jagged edges to catch my arms and stuff. But I'll be able to then reach the t stuff on the top of the aqua hot, including this pump right here. There's a um, so when you change the fluid system, um, the, when you put when you drain all the uh, the antifreeze out of the system, when you refill it, 
there's a there's an air valve in here to because you have to bleed all the air out of the system because you don't want air pockets because that's really bad for burner system so you 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 have to keep your keep that valve open so that it gurgles and then burps air out and then when it just uh, pumps out fluid you know you got all the air out well to get to it you either have to go around that way or have to go up this way and you can't really see it and you're just doing it by feel so by cutting that off you'll be able to see, see it and and i can get right to it and so at the top of the reservoir it's pretty high up there and it was anyway you couldn't really pour right into it yes yeah, so, when so I, how do you do that like, when i did this originally i <laughs> it was it was mounted down here but the so the lid was about right here but when i pulled it off there's this this strut in the way well i even took the strut off pulled it down and out and just blocked the door so it wouldn't wouldn't bounce around and i still couldn't get you know a gallon jug and a funnel and everything else in here and so um i was like well you know i'll just pump it so i got a pump and i put the you know the the, the gallons on the floor because i had to put five gallons of antifreeze in it mm -hmm. so i put that on the ground and i pumped it into the tank and then it went into the system and is it just a hand pump or is it electric how what is it i have both i had a hand pump but i realized well i'm doing five gallons so i have an electric pump to to um to push it into the system faster okay so one of the tricks that that daryl showed is that you um you go on ahead and turn the one of the thermostats for one of these um, zone heaters on and you get that running and you can and when you fill this then it it, pu it pushes the the fluid through the whole system faster, faster that better. makes sense give myself a little bit better access to the fuel filter and the and the and the, the water filter and then the top of the aqua hot because there's a few things on here that um that frankly you have to you you, you want to be able to get to there's also stuff on the back side. There's a whole piping system back there. There's a, a, a mixing valve back there so that you put a mixing valve in there so that you don't get scalding 215 degree water coming out of your faucets. Okay. It's regulated at 120 degrees. So the max. mixing valve is taking the cold water and mixing it with the hot water to get the right. accurate to temperature. Keep it at, to keep it at no hotter than 120. Okay. And make no mistake, the water that comes out of our taps is hot what are the the parts that we're waiting on <laughs> so i'm that guy that if i see a part in my in the instruction manual or in the service thing or, or when i'm pulling it apart that i that either is said to to fail regularly or get damaged or wear out or if i see it and go well that's going to wear out eventually then if it's not a hundred and if it's not two hundred dollars or five hundred dollars a piece then i buy them so grommets and gaskets and things like that so i've actually ordered two boiler uh, uh heating chamber gaskets so that i can replace the one when i pull that apart and clean that all out because not only you're supposed to maintenance this but there's this bolts to the heating chamber that goes inside the boiler chamber well, in the boiler chamber, you get, because that's where the burning is happening, you get diesel soot inside of it. And they said, if you don't clean that out regularly, your heat transfer from the, you'll, you'll, you'll just use more diesel fuel because the heat transfer from the burning chamber to the boiler itself is reduced. So I didn't have one of those gaskets, so I couldn't pull that off because I don't want, you don't want fumes leaking back from out of this, out on this side. Um, so I ordered two of those, one to use and one to put in my kit to, to keep. Um, there's grommets that go around all the electrical and fuel lines and those wear out and they allow more air to leak in, which changes your air fuel mixture, which you don't want. So those are, those are starting to wear. So I ordered those. Um, I ordered the fuel solenoid, which is the main part I'm really looking, waiting for. Um, I ordered the fuel solenoid. I ordered a new, it's called a photo plate. It's what the photo sensor attaches to. And it and it seals the burn chamber. And I ordered one because they said that, that gets deformed or it gets too much carbon on it and it's supposed to be fairly shiny. So the photo sensor has something to, 
to, to see the reflection of the flame off of. And um, I ordered that. I ordered another fuel nozzle to replace the one that I put in here to put in my kit for next year's service or if this one, because apparently these, you get the raw, get bad fuel in here, it can get past the, the filter and, and, uh, and clog up your, your fuel nozzle. And you ordered those ordered. directly from Aqua Hot? I did order them directly from Aqua Hot. Probably could have saved some money by buying them from one of the, the warehouse places. Mm -hmm. um, but it also would have taken, I have two different orders coming, so I would have got one in a week and a half to two weeks, and then I would have got the other one a week later after mm -hmm. that. So it was just it was just getting them clear, getting them faster. So. And the cool thing about the system is that if you don't have the boiler system, you have the backup of the electric. So it's not like you would go without yeah, uh, just, right. hot water. Correct. Okay, so, and then what about heating the coach? What do we have for that if the well, aqua hut's not working? Well, two, two things, actually. We have heat pumps, and as long as you're above, I think it's 38 degrees, mm -hmm. I think below 38, they, they, they stop working. And um, that's electric? And that's actually the air conditioners runs on electric. It's just they just like a home heat pump. It just reverses, and and then um, we have heated floors. So we thought this weekend we instead of listening to the air conditioner, the heat pump run up top, we try the the heated floors, and we have heated heated floors. In the, there are two zones: heated floors in the rear, heated floors in the front. Two separate zones. I turned them on, and wow, that was amazing. <laughs> it was really good. Um, to the point where I had to go in and turn them down during the day because it was 73, 4, 5 degrees in the in the front of the coach by the time uh, mid-morning hit. So, it, and, and man, it's nice to get out of bed and put your feet on warm dial. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so that pretty much is the gist of the Aqua Hot system that we have and what's going on with it. All right, guys, thanks for joining us at Bell's Rides. If you find this information helpful, please give us a comment down below. Check it out. Aqua Hot and Daryl's, um, what is it called? Uh, My RV Works. My RV Works. Very helpful, helped Andy quite a bit. He had this in and out at least five times last week working on it. So if you find any of this information helpful, Give us a comment down below and a little thumbs up. That would be great. Helps the channel quite a bit. Until next time, enjoy the ride.